It is my great pleasure now to introduce our next speaker. And you've got a session and then you've got a panel. And uh, I would love to introduce to you Scott Britton, who is uh, just doing some incredible work. Uh, Battle Cancer, uh, founder of that wonderful um, business, and uh, is here to take it away. So welcome, Scott. Thank you so much, Emma. I'm really interested in listening to that. Um, so really cool. Thank you so much. Um, some very interesting things happening there um, and lots of ideas that I will be uh, be stealing. Um, so really, uh, you know, great opportunity for me here to be part of UK Active and, and part of this, this session. Please, guys, if at all there's any questions, please just fire it through into the chat. Uh, I'll do my very best to either answer them as we go along, but I, I'm going to be quite uh, succinct on my time and not go too much over because there's a, a long day of very interesting people that are going to be putting a lot of uh, effort into this. And also, after my initial talk, I'm just going to be very excited to be joined by two other people um, who are going to be joining us and leading uh, a panel discussion on the subject that we're going to talk about. So um, I will introduce those guys when we get a little bit closer um so i am going to be chatting now just a little bit about battle cancer but not giving you too much um about battle cancer because more what i want to do is talk about um our the particular key point for this and and it's it's about consumer behaviors um so behavioral change in consumers and why consumers associate with particular brands and then those communities of that brand or forming communities from that particular brand um so it was um something for me that's a, a phenomenally important subject whether you run events if you're in the fitness industry in any shape or form as a gym owner um you know a fitness professional anybody that works in this industry how the consumers behave and how that change with the consumers uh, and how we we impact that change um, and particularly how we then create a community and have that conversation with that community is, is a big thing you know i say sometimes in terms of uh, luck and hard work or something that sort of hand in hand come together but i was particularly lucky when founding battle cancer that um i had two particular communities that were in mind um, and the difficulty was was bringing those two together um so creating a community doesn't always have to start from nothing and i think that's what the vast majority of people who are part of uk active or part of the fitness industry completely uh, will exist in a number of communities that maybe you've not identified yet. Um, and that was a big thing for me. So identifying a group of people that have been affected by an illness uh, is one community that we exist in. And another community is those that are interested in fitness and uh, the change and transform it, transform it transformation that comes from fitness. And then also another community of people that, who want to do fundraising. So people who want to put something back into their community, either in the short term or a wider impact in terms of what they do. But those hadn't been brought together. So particularly for me, I wanted to look at, okay, there's these different communities that exist. I want to harness the power of those communities to do a particular thing. And for myself, that was to bring fundraising, so to increase fundraising through fit us. So before I keep waffling on about the particular subjects, I'm just going to give everyone here, because I, I assume most people probably don't know what we do, a very quick rundown of, of what battle cancer is and what we do. So we founded about five years ago, and the whole concept was to bring uh, a one event that would come to major cities uh, and be, you know, make people, everyday people who come and do fitness feel like rock stars. So live music, live lights, um, huge attention, media focus on all shapes, sizes, backgrounds and athletic abilities, um, and equal a playing field so that you would do four nine minute challenges, but you would also be rewarded for how much money you fundraised. For your chosen charity and unlike some other events we didn't just choose one charity we gave the ability for you to choose your own charity that meant something to you you know particularly going back to those communities you know we've, we've supported over 56 charities across the world now our events have raised over two and a half million pounds and that continues to grow and we've gone from one event in manchester and uk to 13 across the world this year we also now provide free fitness classes for people who are post-cancer treatment so fully funded over 12 weeks we do two sessions a week. Uh, this is academically backed. So we, we, we study and look at the research that comes behind the movements, the suggested timeframes, and we look at the results that we get. And we're trying to change the way that people view people with illness. But we're also trying to change the way that the medical profession and the, the medical industry views the fitness industry and sees how actually devastating it is when we ignore 
the fitness industry because the fitness industry is a phenomenal medicine tool that isn't used and isn't brought hand in hand with traditional medicine. So that's what we do at Battle Cancer. And like I say, there was identifying for me, I had no backing, we had no financial startup, we had um, no marketing experience. My particular background was in the public sector. So I'd worked in the police force for 13 years. But what I really did identify that there was a group of communities that had not been brought together and all had incredible strengths and seeing that there was common shared behaviors in, amongst those communities. And that goes back to this consumer behavior and changing those and how you then take these different communities and make them associate with your brand. And so our brand is as battle cancer does multiple things, but how would we get those groups together? And for me, the first point of this was identifying the why. And first of all, I apologize, guys. I don't tend to have a great presentation. I just talk, but I'm obviously super happy to, like I say, answer any questions and fire over for further details to anyone who's interested afterwards. But the first point for me was identifying the why. So why do certain consumers, you know, and they're consumers in terms of fundraising, they're consumers in terms of consuming the support that we can offer people through fitness. But what is the why? And then as soon as we know their why, we have an ability to learn how to communicate with them and make that association with our brand, which was Battle Cancer. So for me, there was a continual thing that the why was that people wanted something to do. So the very first time we started to talk about Battle Cancer, it was that we're just something to do. Now that something to do could be fundraise. It could be to have a day where you commemorate, remember, celebrate the life of yourself or somebody else that's been affected by cancer. There's something to do is to recover physically or mentally post your cancer, cancer treatment and cancer diagnosis. And it might even be that you've suffered a long time uh, in terms of depression and loss, and you just need something that you don't quite know what it is, but you just something to do on that day to try and help you through and get you back on a positive path and changing your life. So for me, the first point of that consumer behavior was, was the why. So why do these people choose to do something? Why do they look at something? Why does somebody land on a particular website over another? And the other thing with that was asking questions. So I went and asked people in those groups. And I think particularly, you know, as people here in the fitness industry, whether it's you're trying to bring people through the door to sign up to a gym, whether you're trying to, you know, work on training packages, maybe anything that you do, there's a reason and a question of asking the person that you're trying to reach out to. So that's what we did. We often, we sought feedback from the very first event and very first interaction with people that we did. And we learned very quickly from open-ended feedback and not just closed feedback the way that we could better communicate with people and bring people to part of the brand. That links me into the mistakes. So mistakes were made in the communication of who we are and what we do. Um, you know, what quite a lot of people here, I imagine that you understand what you do on a daily basis very, very well. Um, and when you explain it to people, you can do that, but there'll be certain elements that you understand and that you see from your, from your viewpoint, but not necessarily everybody else does. So I would often make the mistake of when speaking to people about bowel cancer of uh, just presuming that everybody understood what functional fitness workout is and understanding that four nine minute workouts and using the word accessible, that this would be something that people would easily understand. Um, and also when we talk about multiple things, so I assume many people who are part of UCAptive will wear different hats and do multiple things all under one banner or one brand, similar to what we do. The difficulty is how do you have a clear and structured communication of what you do? And it links back into that why. So working with a number of amazing marketing uh, companies over the past year, we've actually learned that we look at the different communities that exist within our wider brand. We then look at why they associate and come to our brand. And then we can look about the communication to that particular person. So that has been a huge shift for us in terms of trying to say the five or six different things that we do as bowel cancer. We now just say specifically what we do to the person and to the area and the focus group of what we're trying to achieve. And that's been a big thing, but that came about from making mistakes. Very often speaking to media outlets, speaking to podcast hosts, radio hosts, we quite often say a lot of things of what we do and you know as fitness professionals you do a lot of things but it's about being succinct and also prioritizing which is the most important message that you're trying to get across what we saw linking it back to the subject matter of this this little introduction from myself is that behavioral change in consumers so that behavioral change happened as a result of the way that we communicated 
So to give you a direct example, when we started to talk specifically about the battle cancer program, so this is where we offer support for people who oppose cancer treatment, we saw that that changed and we had more signups when we separated uh, the website. So we had a brand new website that was just for the battle cancer program. It listed clear details of what it is, what it does, where we are. And that managed to get a vast amount more signups of people who took part in the program and inspired them you know, to refine their fitness journey. Again, we even changed the branding. We changed uh, all different elements of how we talk about it. And instead of being lumped under just one thing, when we saw the audience, we saw a behavioral change directly that people signed up and started asking less questions. When it came to the, to the actual events, we communicated the concept of fundraising. And that's something that we just presumed everybody understood. And I understand that the audience here we're talking is to UK active, but by hosting events all across the world, we've learned very quickly that fundraising is seen in different ways from different consumers. So for example, um, in uh, Spain and in France, and certainly in the Nordic countries, the concept of going doing a singular event and fundraising for that event is something that's not widely done. Instead, however, it's seen that certain days of the year you are suggested and the whole of society kind of contributes and gives to a particular charity or focus on a day of the year. So we learned to communicate differently to get a different outcome and change in that consumer behavior. So what we had to do was work directly with the charities that are usually supported during that time to get a message that this through battle cancer was a way that people could further add to that and actually change their focus. So instead of being presumptuous that everybody around the world would act how the UK acts with our events, we had to start to look at how different consumers from different countries act. And even when it comes to age ranges, we, we've seen vastly different reactions from people who are in that different age bracket. So we have a lot of people who sit in sort of 30 to mid 40 range do our events, but we've seen more and more uh, people who are 50 plus enter into our events. So we've seen a change in terms of how people access the events themselves. Without wanting to go on too much about the way that we've made mistakes and the way that we've seen that, one big change, and particularly this is something that I wanted to, to raise, and every single person who's hopefully listening into this will, will know, is that COVID has changed the way that the community reacts in terms of fitness and the world and so many markets. However, for us, and particularly linking this back to the titles, you know, the title is Behavioural Change in Consumers and Why Consumers Associate with Particular Brands and Their Communities. Pre-COVID, we spent all our communication time, everything as a brand was trying to bring people to us. Any type of marketing, any type of advert, everything was about bringing people to us. COVID made that change. For Battle Cancer, we thought and knew that we had to change the way that this would be, and we decided to go to people. So yes, we still host very big one-day events. However, a big shift for us was that we introduced our training and education tours. So during COVID, we couldn't hold large amounts of group gatherings. It wasn't safe. It wasn't responsible to do, certainly with the subject matter that we talk about. But we also just couldn't give up on our mission and we couldn't give up on spreading uh, the impact of what COVID brought on cancer services. So what we came up with is a concept that we would tour the countries where we used to hold events. And this is now a main staple of what we do at Battle Cancer. And we tour the cities that we go to for, for large events and we go to the community directly. So we go to public open spaces and invite people to come and take part in workouts and talks about uh, early detection of cancer, uh, spotting signs and where you can access support in that country. We also go to gyms. So we go to all kinds of, we go to boutique gyms, we go to gym chains, we go to CrossFit gyms, we go to F45s, we go to any kind of gym and we take over those sessions that somebody would normally attend for a class. So they walk into a class and they've got a battle cancer class instead of a normal class or group session for that day. And what we found was once we were able to bring our events back, that work that we managed to do communicated our message so much stronger. We had a significant amount more people sign up. So we actually had the biggest ever attendance at our events last year, once we were able to host them again. And we also saw the biggest upturn in fundraising. We actually doubled our previous year on year event fundraising, um, including our London event, which previously fundraised about £110,000. Last year, it fundraised over a quarter of a million just as one event itself. So by us 
seeing the impact that COVID meant that we had to change the way that we brought our community together by going to them had a huge impact for us. And that was that behavioral trend that we saw, you know, people wanted to stay at home, they wanted to stay locally, they wanted to wait until the confidence was built up to be in large groups again. And certainly for us, when we're talking about a message of how cancer can impact on people, we knew that to get attention, we had to get them at their own time when they felt comfortable to listen to that message not just have that um, you know ram down the throat at a particular time another key thing for me and this is why i believe that we've done quite well at the moment you know we're, we're very lucky and we work very hard but we've still got a long way to go with what we're trying to do at battle cancer but is capturing passion through stories um, and this is a particular point for me about how people associate with brands um, and that brand as i say could be a gym a clothing brand a supplement brand a, a training anything but personal stories and passion being shown through those stories have been the biggest and most interacted uh, media post activations that we've ever done we were very fortunate to have a video with some very big celebrities, including Hollywood stars. And the vast majority of feedback was they actually weren't bothered about the Hollywood stars. It was about the underlying stories of people that we shared uh, throughout that. And again, consumers have changed, you know, form of media that we now uh, accept, you know, just from uh, the previous presentation, looking at the way that some of the fitness classes are delivered. It's very grabbing, it's all about emotion, it's all about passion, it's showing the impact of what you can do now and how that affects later on. So for us, we needed to share more and more real stories of real people and not just position, you know, the fitness industry used to be built on almost the unattainable image. It was always, you know, gladiator-esque, it was, uh, you know, elite bodybuilder, that was the package that sold everything. Now, now it's about the transformative journey. Now it's about people who work hard and try hard and manage going through illness while still training you know that manage being a mum and manage working being a dad and full-time work um, and volunteering and still training that's the passion that we've managed to do and we've captured that by sharing real life stories and that's been a significant impact and uplift for us in terms of how we've changed the way that we communicate with consumers but also how consumers uh, interact and associate with our brand because then they feel part of the family they feel that they know you and once that connection's made because they understand and sharing our stories it's it's very, very easy to get your continued message across. I mentioned on this slightly earlier, and I'm going to wrap up pretty soon to start bringing my other guests in to talk and uh, I'll hopefully have a little bit of a, a chance to answer a question, first of all. Um, but international differences, um, you know, I mentioned about the charity aspect. So fundraising is seen very differently in different international spaces in different countries. We host events across the UAE, the US, all across Europe. Um, and we work with the charities in those countries to better understand how people fundraise, why people fundraise, and the communication to people through that and looking at the impact of what that does. But another interesting thing for us was looking at how people sign up to our events, you know, uh, how people sign up to come and do uh, the classes that we provide. And I think this is a key message for anyone in the fitness industry who's looking to develop a brand and develop a community in and around that brand is, is looking at the differences of the people that you want to have in that mix. You know, it's very difficult when you hear a brand say, well, I'm aimed at everybody you know that's the dream and that's the goal um, but it's also very difficult to capture that so what we decided to do was look at a core demographic of people so we look at people who particularly do three to five fitness classes a week as our core initial demographic of people and then even within that core demographic that share so many similar characteristics they all can buy purchase and consume in very different ways so as an example in uk we're quite good we we buy tickets to events very far in advance um, in the uae they do it very last minute uh, across certain aspects of europe in germany people sign up uh, very early spain they sign up very late uh, the us even state to state that changes so what we learned was that we actually have to change the way that we allow people to sign up to our events you know to purchase our products um, and how people then will fundraise around that so instead, we used to just have a very set period of time that an event sale is on for this particular amount of time, and then it, it closes. And what we saw was that reaction did not work across different markets. So we had to strategize. So we actually look at the country. We look and have worked with people who work in consumer trend forecasting and tell us how people in those countries and in those different societies 
sign up to events. And it's something that we put research and time and effort and a small amount of money into. And it came back tenfold in the way that we could bring people to us. So not just presuming that everybody would be the same, but actually targeting people for the way that they want to be communicated to. And we have people at events who've signed up a year before to people who've signed up two weeks before, all at the same event, enjoying and consuming the same product, but approaching it in a very different way, being communicated in a very different way. For me, the future of battle cancer, and conscious of time, I promise I'm going to move on now. The future of battle cancer is based around how we build out that brand. We use language throughout every communication that we do that is familial. We use the words family. We have volunteers of people that have separate uh, battle cancer patches. We've had people have battle cancer tattoos. And um, we can constantly communicate with the cancer community about key language, wording, how people want to be spoken to, what inspires people, what doesn't. Uh, and for me, it's all about bringing and watching and listening to the people that you want to have in your community. It's very difficult to just get people to believe in what you do without listening to them and engaging with them. So hopefully me speaking throughout this hasn't just been too boring for you guys. It's been an absolute pleasure for me just to talk about a couple of the things that we do at Battle Cancer that has helped us reach a very good starting point so far. I did see a question come in. So just before I bring on the guests and I just wanted to have a little read of the question. Um, Amazing. And effectively, yeah. So coming through the question about um, it's from Ian, which is about, you know, knowing more about battle cancer and how we can help and become part of the community, raise money for, for cancer research, which is phenomenal. Um, and obviously cancer has, has affected yourself in, in many different ways, which is completely the case that we find with so many people. Um, if you find your way onto www.battlecancer.com, you can see both our events and also our program. We're expanding both. We expand our program to provide and help even more people. We have a community section there. We have a, a weekly returning Giving Tuesday where we highlight smaller charities and what people do. And we have a, a constant battle cancer story uh, where we try and inspire people of what, what we're trying to do. But um, particularly, you know, Ian, uh, my details will be available at the end of this as well. And I'd love to kind of share more, more with you as well. 